bro. Okay. Well, we're live on like four platforms right now. I got kicked off Instagram live for 15 more days. Don't ask me why. Well, I got hacked. That's why. <laughs> okay. So first question, this is a pretty easy one. Let's see who's good at trivia. Who's actually, who actually knows stuff? Who's intellectual? Anybody? Who's actually intellectual and knows stuff? Believe it or not, most of the world knows nothing. I was doing a private client yesterday. These are like a private mentoring that I do. And um, I told the guy, you got to rank yourself on brain power because it matters. In business, people don't like to do business with stupid people. And at the high levels, people care if you're somewhat intellectual. You don't have to be a PhD in something, but it's important to know stuff. Just from the standpoint of social proof, people, people ask me, how do you hire better people? How do you make more money? Well, the intelligent people, I'm not necessarily saying the ethical people, but intelligent people rule the world, at least at some level in business. You can argue, well, you know, is Bill Gates really smart? Is But overall, it matters. So intellectual horsepower, somebody said, that's a good way to put it. You got to be practicing. So let's just do a really practical question on the history of money. Okay. Um, Rick, I always get this damn TikTok message. Can you look at this message? Drive me nuts. So here's the, we'll start out with it for a hundred bucks. I'll send it in Bitcoin right here. If you close it, it'll pop up 30 times. Ty, you're the goat, bro. Been listening to your recent podcast. Good. Glad you like it. All right. Question number one, $100 in Bitcoin. I'll send it or I'll Venmo you. Have your Venmo ready if you're in America. The question is, what was the first electric car? Was it Elon Musk? Was it Tesla? Was it BMW? Who created the first commercially available electric car? Who knows? I'm going I'm to give everybody a little, I'm live on multiple channels, so. I'm going to look down for a second. I'm going to give 30 seconds. So in general, you want to be third. In any business, the third person usually makes all the money. Not the first, not the second, not the fifth, not the hundredth, third. Mark Zuckerberg was the third big social media platform, Facebook. And he made more money than Friendster, any of those. Who was it? I'm not sure I've seen anybody. Not Henry Ford. I don't even think he ever made an electric car. Nope. Somebody wrote Tesla rival. <laughs> nope. Am I really live right now? Yes, I am. It is November 18th. What's the question? Who's the first person to create an electric car commercially available? Bonus if you know what year it was. Bonus if you know what year. I'm live on TikTok, my Zoom, Instagram. I'm not Instagram. I got kicked off Instagram for 15 more days. Twitter, Facebook, and YouTube. Who knows? Who is the person? It's a relatively famous person. The first commercially available. There might have been another car. This one's easy. Usually I give stuff you can't Google. You can go. I like ChatGPT. Let's put it in ChatGPT. Chat Who created the first commercially available electric car? It's better if you speak into ChatGPT. There we go. Just thinking of it. I, now, there's probably different arguments. It's like anything. People arguing who's the person. But I researched this. I was, I'm was i working on a book, my book, and I researched this. Why is it saying? ChatGBT is bugging out a lot. All right. So I've seen two different answers. The Chevy Volt was modern, but there was somebody in the 1800s. Oh. Yeah. So Edison had one, but I'll, I'll, I won't take that one. I'm just going to look up now. I haven't even looked at the comments, and I'll pick one person here. But if you don't have your Venmo ready, I want Venmo right now for proof. Um, you know, then I'm going to skip to the next person. So I'm just looking up. Muhammad... Um, I can't even see here what Hassani. All right, William Morrison. So Muhammad Hassani, what's your Venmo? Muhammad, I got another one. 
Okay. Somebody says you they want my shirt. You want the shirt off my back? Now, by the way, we're talking about I'm live. The main thing is not a live giveaway. I'm talking on I'm going to be laying out kind of the pie graph for the trends you need to catch in 2024 if you want to make any money. The trends are changing very fast. Okay. Muhammad, do you have your Venmo? You have Wise. Okay. Give me your Bitcoin wallet. If you're outside the U.S., Bitcoin. I don't want to use Wise is a pain in the ass. That fucking company pain in my ass. It's like having to use bank wire. Bitcoin's way better for this stuff. Somebody's, oh, you're in Iran. Okay. Give me Bitcoin address, wallet. Okay. Let me talk for a second, then I'll do the second question. So I just am almost done with my three book, my book, The Three Trends. So there's three trends right now that I think these are big picture trends, and then I can break it down. If you want to make a million dollars in 2024, um, first, you got to understand the flow of history. You had first the rise of governments and the rise of corporations. And now you have the rise, really, of social media individuals making all the money. It used to be governments back, remember back when you read in history, Christopher Columbus, Cortez, all these people were government sanctioned money makers. They went, they took back 100 tons of gold from Central and South America back to Spain to the government. They worked for the queen. That's how you made your money. The second thing was the rise of corporations. You had IBM, you had Microsoft, you had these, and some of these corporations are still powerful. Coca-Cola, you know, Ford, these are all, but now really starting in 2020, we're in the third era. So there's been three eras of in the modern world of making money, government sanctioned money making, corporate capitalism, and now you have the rise of the individual who uses social media. Remember, social media has made everything easy. When I started as an entrepreneur, if you wanted to advertise, you'd get like a Yellow Pages ad cost $30,000. If you wanted to have a TV, I remember looking into a TV commercial for one of my companies, you had to put down a hundred grand up front. Now, the rise of the individual and social media wealth creation on my phone, theoretically, I could reach 2 billion people. Mr. Beast has 200 mil, uh, million people on his YouTube channel. And across all his channels, I don't know, maybe he has 300 million. Okay. So we have the rise. You got to understand the eras of history. You have the three eras, right? Government. The problem is a lot of people still using old mentality. There's literally people out there still care about politics. And they're like, well, this president, if he gets in power, then we'll have more money. I'm like, hell no. Government stopped caring about people a long time ago. Okay. They pretend they do. Politicians stopped caring about you years. Maybe in the 1800s, the U.S. income tax was 1%. 1%. So government wasn't really attacking you. They would take a little bit of money, build some roads, build a small military. Now you got, if you live in California, government is taking 52.5%. Okay. So boom, the, the, the three eras, era one, era two, era three, rise of government. Then you had the rise of corporations. That was last century. Corporations ruled the world. You had the IBMs, you know, like these big faceless companies. And then lastly, now we're in the, the third era is the rise of the individual, but that's social media wealth. Without, so, with, if you know how to use social media, you're going to create all the wealth because you can reach the world without needing a big corporation behind you. So it's a very interesting time. And really, the, the pandemic of 2020 is what ushered in, okay, what ushered in the rise of era three. Now, once you realize you're in era three, then there's three trends you can catch. And that's how you actually turn social media into money. So how do you turn social media into money? You can think of like kind of a, it's not a perfect <laughs> pie graph, but you got, you know, one way one, way two, way three. That's the three ways, the trends that you can make money using social media. Okay. One is to sell a product two is to sell a service and three is an interesting one don't have a business yourself just resell other people's stuff and get paid a referral commission so when you look
Look at the three trends for people. The best, what I do, if you want to make the most money, is all three. Have products, physical and digital. Have services that you sell, like SMMA. And then resell as an affiliate other people's programs. I've made millions of dollars from one affiliate product. I remember a guy wrote me a check for $1.8 million just to help resell his product. Okay. Reselling is not really a service. A service-based, I mean, I hear you, but services like specifically, I'll do your marketing on a day-in, day-out basis. When I say reselling, I might just send an email for you one time. Okay. If you've got an Instagram page, you can come, you know, promote one thing for somebody one time. That's not really a service. I mean, you can technically say everything. All right. Can somebody WhatsApp me? Mohammed, I'm going to send you, I got your Bitcoin address. I'll show everybody. It'll show up on the blockchain. I keep a little account just to give this out. Who can, I need Itzel, can you, or somebody who's, can you, Send me that down. Okay, here we go. Not nah, don't put it in two damn WhatsApps. Don't be putting it in one. How the hell am I going to cut and paste it? Okay, so we're going to go on to number two. Number two giveaway. We'll do a hundred fifty, uh, another hundred bucks, or hundred fifty bucks on this one. Okay, Muhammad, I'll send you the money here shortly. Okay, so the second way, or the second question for trivia, you want. Make a 150 bucks. Hey, I'll do one that's a tad bit harder because it's kind of a subjective question and I'm the judge. If you look back in history, okay, look back over the last 500 years, who, not counting Rockefeller, forget Rockefeller, who made the most money? Who living or dead has been in the really the wealthiest person in the last 500 years again this is a judgment call because you never really know nobody's gonna put their wealth online most people ain't showing you all their wealth someone said pablo escobar oh he was wealthy but he wasn't the wealthiest he was making a billion a month that's pretty good rick would you like to make a billion a month i would Rick is a big fan. He said he'd even take 10% of that. You'd take 100 mil a month? In the last 500 years, who would have been the wealthiest person for 150 bucks? Come on now. Give me something. And give me why. Why? And we're going to argue all day about this, by the way. While you guys do that, I'm going to send the last winner his money. I'm going to show you right now on, this is why I love crypto. I'm still a fan. A lot of people are fair weather friends of crypto, but I've, I like crypto, especially for stuff like this. It just works. You know, you can, I can send somebody money no matter where they live in the world, you know? Okay. That's an invalid. You didn't send me a Bitcoin wallet. That's not a Bitcoin one. That's not a Bitcoin one. It says invalid Bitcoin address. So whoever sent that, you got to cut and paste correctly. Somebody said Andrew Carnage. That's not the right person. That's not even a person. All right, let's pick somebody here. Do, 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 do. Okay. All right. I like this guy. I, I, people about to argue with me, but I just pinned Tyler Sanchez on TikTok. Napoleon. Now, you could argue almost an acceptable answer is Vladimir Putin in Russia. But nah, Napoleon. I'm going to explain why. By the way, Tyler Sanchez, if you're in the U.S., give me your Venmo. Can you post it here on Twitter? I'm going to send it right now. I'm trying to send this guy his last money, but he gave me an invalid Bitcoin. The reason Napoleon was richer than Vladimir Putin is at one point, at least at one point, obviously wealth goes up and down. He actually even controlled Moscow. So he controlled from Eastern Europe, Moscow. He conquered Poland. He conquered the entire Eastern Europe. 
he always was all the way down into Egypt, you know, Middle East, and he controlled all of Western Europe except for England. Okay. Putin right now just controls Russia, which is a lot, but the first trillionaire was really Napoleon at his peak, just to be clear. Not when he was failing. He failed. I mean, he lost at the end. Everybody loses at the end. Putin will lose at the end. So, okay. Um, I'm looking for him. How did it fucking, what happened to you? Somebody's asking me, am I going to go back on Fresh and Fit? Okay, Sanchez, where are you, man? Tyler Sanchez, I'm going to pin him again here. Tyler, I need it. I need your Bitcoin or Venmo. 150 bucks. I got one more. Somebody said, Ty, are you into crypto? Man, in the year 2016, I told 100 million people to buy Bitcoin. I got. A, I did a video. Got taken down my YouTube. It was thirty five hundred. ETH was one seventy five. By the way, there's a badass movie coming out. This new Napoleon movie. Now remember, you got the three eras: right, the government era, wealth creation, the corporate era. Now you're in social media. So now the game is just mastering social media. Like you, you got to master social media. And I, so I'm going to talk about that in a second, but. Okay, let me try to give this guy his money. Okay, Tyler Sanchez, I'm going to send you Venmo since you're in the U.S. The real T. Sange. Here we go. Sending it to you. Venmo. Opening Venmo. Putting in his username. And then I got one more. We're going to do another one. We got a third place. These are important things. You know the reason why you want to know history? It's like they say. It's like people who don't study history are doomed to replay, uh, to uh, repeat the errors. Napoleon was the re richest man in history, modern history, but he made a mistake. He was too ambitious. He was too ambitious, so people took back their wealth. If you go, If you get too greedy, people are going to attack you. To get the wealth back. They're like, fuck that. He's too big of a target. I just recorded a video on this. All right, here's Tyler Sanchez. I'm sending him 150. Y'all can see. Let's see if it goes through. Do, do, do. Sometimes you get blocked trying to send people money. Man, I used to try to PayPal affiliates money and it would like, it would crap. Yeah, here we go. All right, you sent a pay payment to Tyler Sanchez, 150. By the way, this reselling thing, who here has ever made money reselling other people's product? Y'all should, I'm going to show you all. Like I said, in my new Three Trends ebook, you can buy it on, did I put it on my, what's the link to buy my, it's on my tylopez.com, I think. Can you see the damn ebook link? Let me see. You can pre-order it. It's coming out next week. Yeah, if you click on the top. It says three trends in the little nav bar. Okay. Anyway, I'm going to teach some of it right now. Give a man a fish, feed him for a day. Teach a man to fish, feed him for a lifetime. Okay, I'm going to try to get this dude his... All right. The Bitcoin go through, it looks like. No, I, the Bitcoin couldn't go through because I the Venmo went through. Did someone else send him the money? It looks like it's oh, Itzel, you already sent him the money? Okay, good. How to become an affiliate. Um, it's a, I need a link to sign up to. I got three levels of affiliates for my products. I'm going to roll out next week a badass affiliate program for you. I did this in 2019. Well, I was just talking to one dude who made $90,000. How much did David Woodbury make as an affiliate? Uh, hundreds of thousands of dollars. He made $500,000 in like... A year or two he quit his job so you can use your social media to resell other people's products I've got it if you send people to my website and they sign up anything they buy for the first year I pay you so it's not just things they buy right away 
I got a good email follow-up sequence. David Woodbury, look him up on YouTube. He made, I'm, how much did David Woodbury make, Itzel? I thought he told me he made over 500,000. Yeah, over the last couple of years, he made like 500 Gs reselling my product. This is such a good one because you don't even have to build a business. All you have to do is create crazy videos on Instagram, TikTok, get a lot of attention, and then you don't have to build a business. It's a totally underrated trend. Everybody knows about it, but nobody's doing it. Who here, honestly, has ever made money for reselling other people's products? Just telling people to go buy something and then you got a commission. How much? Somebody said, yeah, but put how much, not just that you did it. Giovanni, oh man, what a good name. This guy's name is Giovanni Bonchicini. Let me guess where you're from. Giovanni, you're from Atlanta, Georgia. <laughs> I think you're Italian. Does that sound like an Atlanta, Georgia name? Rick, I'm going to rename Rick my sound engineer. I'm going to start calling you Giovanni Bonvicini. How do you say that? Both Bonvicini. Sounds like a, a plate of food. You want some Bonvicini? Do you remember in the office where Michael Scott is trying to pretend like he's in the Italian mafia? And he, she's like, what do you want? He's like, I want the gabagool. And she's like, what, what is the gabagool? <laughs> the gabagool. Okay. Chris Salita made 532000 in two years with 20% commissions on affiliate reselling. The real world have made short form content more than 20 Gs. Olamadi Oluwafemi, probably that's a Nigeria name, made 104000 in commission. Yeah. Yeah, y'all should be doing affiliate stuff. You can do it for me. You can do it for other people, man. What? Yeah, here's David Woodbury. He made 650000 as an affiliate for me. He's come and he actually teaches how he did it. He just went on YouTube and started creating reviews of my products and then putting a link. I give you an affiliate tracking link. Any, and anything they buy, I pay you. You know? Ty, you know Owen Cook? He also vouches for you. Yeah, Owen Cook's one of the first guys who put me on YouTube. He put me on his YouTube. Okay. Verez has made 5000 for a done-for-you marketing service. Yeah. Yep, I got this affiliate. Okay, so let's talk about the three trends. I'm going to do the last giveaway here in a little bit. So somebody said, where's your Lamborghini? Did they repo it? <laughs> no, it didn't get repoed. That would be a sad day, boy. Mofo's coming to take your Lamborghini away from you. Not ideal. That hasn't happened to me, but I hope it doesn't happen to any of you. Okay. How can we apply to be an affiliate? I'll, I'll put a link here. Yeah, that would be a good viral video. I should just invent. I should just have somebody fake repo my Lambo. I thought of building one. Like I thought of doing a new here in my garage commercial. And the here in my garage commercial would basically be like, oh, here in my garage. I had all these Lamborghinis behind me and like hot girls. But then the wind blows and it all falls over. They're like mannequins and fake shit. Since a lot of people was like, that's a set. That's not real. Yeah, I should do that for April Fools. Okay, what service-based business do you suggest? Simplest one is do marketing for people, but, but a little twist on it. Do marketing for personal brands. Everybody wants to become famous now. Everybody wants to be famous. So if you can help people blow up and become more famous, they'll pay you one to $10,000 a month. I got somebody in Dubai, a, a woman making a couple million profit a year. She was like, Ty, I want to blow up my personal brand. Do you know anybody who will help me with my podcast, edit them, do TikToks and Insta Reels for me? She, I guarantee you, right now, she'd pay you $5,000 a month. And it'd be part-time work. She doesn't care. She's got money out the yin-yang. So, like, people are sleeping on this strategy. Um, would you advise do affiliate marketing? So, let's open up for one sec. Somebody said... I'm sorry, but Napoleon is not correct. He's not the richest person. Xi Jinping of China would be classified. No, but you have to go to Napoleon was the dictator 
in a, a way that the Chinese dictator is. China is half dictatorship, but it's also he doesn't have unlimited power. He's not a dictator like Napoleon was. Napoleon was called. He walked around. People called him the emperor. He didn't have a he didn't have a council. So even the Chinese, even Stalin. Now, Stalin was pretty rich, but he only controlled Russia and Eastern Europe. He didn't control Western Europe. Someone said Hitler. Yeah, but Hitler never really. He was he never really. When he was his wealthiest, Adolf Hitler in the 1830s and even into the early 1840s before he started losing, he only controlled Germany, had allies in Italy. He didn't control. He could now he controlled France at some point, but he never conquered Russia. Remember, he lost at Moscow. Napoleon's the only modern guy to actually take Moscow. So it's and remember Hitler bogged down in the Ukraine the Battle of Stalingrad. He didn't really win that decisively. Napoleon, go watch that movie. He was a decisive winner, man. So okay. Somebody said Emperor of the Month. Who wants to be Emperor of the Month? Someone said America's number one. We all know that. Yeah, but America's probably on the on the downhill slope. America, probably post World War II, was at its peak. Now America's starting to. I wouldn't be putting America at the top anymore. I mean, it's still at the top, but it's probably falling. You can argue. You know, but for sure, other countries like China used to be way less wealthy compared to the U.S. And now China's look at TikTok. That's a Chinese company that controls the eyeballs of half the world, man. You know what I'm saying? So. Um, Justin says, Ty took a bunch of your courses and even got the certificates for your e-com and SMMA. You should do more reviews. Hell yeah, Justin, you should get in my affiliate program. It's like no brainer, man. No brainer. Now, the other thing, I'm, let me talk about something for a second. And then I'm going to do this third thing. Somebody said, Ty, it's not falling. We are miles and years ahead. Not really. I mean, West, the, um, the GDP of the US is, let's say, 20 trillion. The GDP of Europe, if you look at the EU, is the same. And you've got the rise of India. Now, they're still behind, but India is now the most populous place in the world. It's on the rise. Africa's on the rise. The BRICS countries, Brazil, on the rise. Some of my most successful students are in Brazil. I was just with a student who's 18, got in my program, sitting on like $6 million of cash at 18. I hardly know any American kid who's 18 sitting on $6 million of cash. That was in Brazil. So America has gotten too cocky. America is at the top right now, but it's kind of like... It's kind of like a UFC fighter who's the champion, but you can see he doesn't take it seriously anymore. And you know he's going to get knocked out. It might take a week. It might take a decade. But you know this dude's going to get knocked out because he's he, he's too arrogant. America, you know, most Americans don't even know where Brazil is if you ask them to point on a map. That's a mistake. That's a mistake. You must know, you know, you have to know thine enemy do i see a war coming to the u.s let, let me talk about something else um so for 2024 the, the, let me give you one thing that is your ultimate wealth creation tool okay the number one it's not what you're thinking now i showed you the three trends the ways you can practically make money as an individual with social media but you're still going to fail if you don't have this one thing. Okay. It, so here, here's what it is. What did Elon Musk really do? Okay. What did Elon Musk really do? What's the actual trick that nobody ever talks about with Elon Musk? Who knows? Why is he the richest person in the world? Give some reasons why Elon Musk is the richest people. One of them is he he bought into social media about three years ago and went hardcore on social media. So he's boosted all of his brands, including Tesla, through the roof because now he owns Twitter X. 
he before Twitter X, he was still doubling down doing he was always the face of he passed forward because he was the face of the brand. Somebody said because his father was a millionaire, I let him borrow money. That's a little more Donald Trump. What what is the actual reason? Nobody ever gets this. He became known. Yes, but that's why he became the richest person. What made Elon Musk rich to start? Gets up at 4 a.m. No. I don't even think he does. Somebody says your marker board is backwards. No, I'm just I'm streaming backwards. He sold a company to eBay. Yeah, yeah, but like what's the underlying thing that you can do? What's the underlying thing that you can do? <laughs> Somebody said he took your online seminar. No, he was before me. Older than me. He bought a dye business. He's always learning. He does read a lot. His sister said he would read two books a day. Somebody said he is white. That's not the reason. It doesn't hurt. That's not, but there's a lot of poor white people too. <laughs> so he's like, be white and can automatically make you rich. He told the truth. He continually, nobody, it's crazy. I can do a live call with a thousand people watching and like, if I go live for an hour, like 40,000 people watch when you count people coming in and out and literally not one person gets it. This is why I came back to social media because I'm like, people are missing all the damn thing. There's the closest I've seen. Muhammad said, no people who know people. That is a pretty good answer. Is that the Muhammad who already won the first prize? This dude is going to come and sweep up all the money from all. This wasn't even a giveaway yet. He catches trends early. Yeah. That's kind, that's, that is an important one, but that's not the one. Debt, no. Found companies that already existed. That helped. Okay. I want you to read the story, his actual life story. He had 13 dudes that he called the PayPal Mafia. They lived together, worked together brainstorm together nonstop for like, I don't know, five or 10 years. They were in San Francisco. They all kind of, they didn't necessarily like sleep in the same room. But when he was young, it was PayPal Mafia. How many people was in the damn PayPal Mafia? Who knows? Okay. Just Google it. That's not a trick question. How many people was in his PayPal Mafia? I know some of them. There's a guy named Ken Howery, who was, I went to his birthday. He was the, uh, he's the, he was the uh, Donald Trump's ambassador to Sweden. Cool job. If I could be any government position, ambassador to Sweden. He got the best house in Stockholm. I went to it. It's on this, it's in the center of Stockholm. It's beautiful. U.S. got a machine gun on the rooftop. <laughs> I didn't realize how fancy it was. And I went there like after the gym. Because I thought it was a little birthday party. And then I realized, oh shit, I'm at the most expensive house in Sweden. So that's Ken Howery. There's another guy named Peter Thiel who's pretty famous. Peter Thiel is the guy who paid 100, he's the billionaire who paid people 100 grand not to go to college. One kid took that 100 grand and built Ethereum. That's Vitalik Buterin, or however you say his last name. So who is, so how many people are in the PayPal mafia? Let's go back to our good old. Is why I like ChatGBT. How many people were in Elon Musk PayPal Mafia and give the names? This is where ChatGPT is like, it's just you can speak into it more colloquial. There you go. So you had Elon Musk, you had Peter Thiel, you had Max Levin, uh, Levchin, Reed Hoffman, that's the guy who started LinkedIn, Steve Chen, he's the co founder of YouTube. <laughs> Chad Hurley, the other co-founder of YouTube. Jawed Kareem, the third co-founder of YouTube. Jerem Stoppelman, he co-founded Yelp. David Sachs, he found he was the COO of PayPal. Rolif Botha, he's a partner at Sequoia, which is basically one of the biggest funds in the world. Uh, Keith Rabwa, he's one of the founders at LinkedIn Square. Okay, there's even more. That's just a few of them. I already gave you another one, Ken, who co-founded 
with Peter Thiel, um, the Founders Fund, which at one point was the number one or two largest venture capital firm in the world. So like, just think about what he actually had that you and I didn't have. Imagine you're sitting here for years in a room. You're sitting here for years in a room, brainstorming, thinking, developing businesses, software, ideas with this mafia of people. Literally, they called it a mafia. What you all are missing. Now, I have a mafia like this. I have a business mafia. I don't call it the PayPal mafia. I call it my syndicate. Right now, look, I'll give you an example. I'll cover up a name. Here's a guy I was just talking to yesterday. I'm not going to say his name. Some of you will know him. He's more of an underground entrepreneur. But let me just give you an example of my syndicate. Okay. Um, hold on one second. I'll cover his name so you can't see. So here's his business. I was just like, how's business? He's done 534 million in revenue with 97 million in profit. I'm covering his name. This is a guy that I talked to. You can see we were talking yesterday, Thursday. I was just asking him, how's revenue? He's like, total revenue, 534 million, 97 million profit. It's not Alex. That's another. I have different partners. These aren't even business partners. These are dudes in my, you, you guys know what the syndicate, that was another name for the mafia. They call themselves different names, Cosa Nostra, all these kind of names. Somebody said that's a lot of expenses. Not really. He's running 20% margins, net margins on 500 million. If you're doing 100 million net on 500, you're doing great. Who here, somebody is criticizing that. Who here is okay with only making 97 million profit? Anybody? Anybody pissed off at that? So it's not it's not just the gross. It's great to have, even if his mar even if it done 2 billion of revenue, if you put 97 mil in your pocket, you're going to be a happy person. Okay, so you got to change. Let me give you some practical things you're going to have to do in 2024 or you're going to lose to other people who have their own business mafia. You need at least 15 people, but ideally 150 people in your phone. Here, I'll show you my contacts. Now, obviously, all of these people, I always tell people like it's not everything to have contacts, but contacts matter a lot. Okay, and you don't need, I have 10,311 contacts in this. Now, not all of them are business people, but if you can get 150 people, between 15 and 150 people in your network, and I'm not talking, people talk about networking, like going to networking parties. That's not what Elon Musk, PayPal Mafia was. These are people that were friends. They knew each other. They talked a lot. I always say it doesn't count to just have somebody's number. It's only if they smile when you message them. Somebody, Troy, Trey says he has 128 contacts in his phone. Look, it's not a competition who can have the most people in the phone. That's not why I'm showing you mine. What I'm saying is you're going to be limited by who you know. By who you know. So, so many people are focused on what they know. And that's important too. You got to have how how to make money, but you have to have who too. It's how and who. I see so much stuff now on TikTok. People are like, yo, here's how you make money on e-com, drop shipping. That's all how, but that shit ain't going to work for long. So you need who, because when something I'm doing is not working, what's the first thing I do? I go onto my phone, I WhatsApp or I text like, 20 people. Yo, bro, what do you think of this funnel? It's not converting. This email marketing campaign is not working. Who's the best affiliate network? And people start telling me like that. In one day, I can get more information than people get in a lifetime. So you have to have 15 to 150 people in your own quote unquote mafia, your own syndicate. And without that, you will, even if you have the how, you're going to lose to people who have the who and the how. It's not just how much you know. It's who you know. 
it's a big deal. Everybody's focused and it's good. I'm a big fan of books. Rick, can you grab the books by my bed just to show whenever I'm on a trip right now traveling, I'm on a little hotel out in the countryside. I like to do business. Yeah, just hand me some of those. These are ones my maid that I travel with. These are just a few books that I keep. This is a great one, by the way. It's called Super Forecasting, How to Read Trends. That's a good one. I got an interesting health book, Why Jellyfish Age Backwards. This is a book on global trends about Africa, the rise of Africa. It's a continent. Somebody was talking about hit, Hitler being rich. This is a book on Nazi billionaires, how the Nazis just took wealth from other people, and that's how they became billionaires. This is a book. Look at this book, Social Chemistry. This is the actual science of human connection. Elon Musk's trick was his damn PayPal mafia. And he's still working with those same people. Not all of them, but some of them he's still close with. So the problem with school is it's all teaching you how to do math, how to, but it's most schools, you're not getting a network of people because everybody is lost in your school. The only reason to go to Harvard is not to graduate. Did you notice all the wealthiest people who went to Harvard didn't graduate? They didn't graduate. Am I missing a mic? Is this another mic, Rick? No. What's this? Yeah, it is. That is the power. Oh, okay. Somebody said no audio. Did you? Did I lose my audio on TikTok? Yellow. So, who can hear me on TikTok? Yeah, audio is fine. So, I am worried for people because now we live in the rise of information and knowledge, which is all good. That's all good. But I am concerned at the world not having a network. I'm actually, so by the way, who was at my seminar? I just did a seminar in Beverly Hills last week. Who was at the seminar? Priscilla was there. I, I just rented a little room and I was like, let me put 150 people in. Let me show you how to change your life. For those of you who couldn't come, I'm going to put a link, by the way. Um, I just opened up what I call it my junior syndicate, which is I'm putting in, I'm going to put in, you know, a syndicate of people. I just built my own app. The problem with the syndicate, if I try to bring this guy that's doing 500 million in revenue with 97 million in profit, he doesn't want to come to a big conference. He doesn't really want to come live, but I built like kind of an anonymous app, my Ty Lopez app. And this dude can just give advice. I'll, I'll give you an example. I was looking, who here knows that marketing matters? Like if you have a good product, but you don't know how to market it. So I was show, this is what I just showed to him. Okay. I saw a badass ad on Instagram. I share these ads with my network, with my syndicate. Check out this ad. If you reverse engineer this ad for any product, you're going to make crazy money. I'm telling you, this ad right here, hold on. Oh, actually, I screen recorded it. Yeah, let me find the screen recording. This is an ad. It's selling a product that's basically um, a little chip you put on your phone to block EMFs. But it is the best damn ad that I've seen for this entire year. If you literally copy this ad and just change the words, you will make crazy money for selling anything. Where is this one? Can you bump this, Itzel? I posted it the other day. It's that one with the little chip. It's a little chip that you put. It's not. Oh, here it is. Here it is. This ad is two minutes and 10 seconds. I screen downloaded this. Studies that were downplaying sugar's role in heart this is the best copy written ad. This damn ad, I'm telling you, if you have an agency, use this ad. If you um, are selling a physical product, use just change the words. But the exact format, the exact length, the exact tone of voice, the exact speed, words per minute, don't change anything. So these are the kind of things that I share with my inner circle network. I call it my syndicate. What's the name of the ad? It was selling the name of it, the product. 
It's this little chip. It's like a little thing and it blocks the EMF radiation. Okay. So that's an example of stuff that I share in my syndicate. And you got to have that, man. You have to have that syndicate. And I feel bad for people because everybody's struggling to try to make more money. And I'm like, you're not even on the right track. You don't know enough people. There's this thought that you can just lock yourself in a room and you're so intelligent and you're like a mad scientist and you got you pour together like a chemistry set and all of a sudden a billion dollars comes out. Well, are you smarter than Elon Musk? Because he didn't get well. He had a business before, a small business. I think it was him and his brother or something, family member. But his first big business where he netted over 100 million was PayPal. And that's where he sat with 13 dudes in a room in San Francisco for years, brainstorming ideas, becoming friends. So that's where I'm going. Like if somebody asked me, Ty, can I borrow $55,000 from you? Your money will be securitized with a piece of real estate. See, you don't need me. This guy's name is Cole on Facebook. You need a network, man. So you just type, yo, I got a badass piece of property. Who wants to buy it with me? If you had 150 badasses in your syndicate, your business mafia, and you, one person is going to reply to you and you can buy that piece of property. Who here has tried to do real estate? You got a good opportunity or you're going to build something good, but you don't have the capital for it. It's because you don't, you don't know anybody. You don't know anybody. So one simple way, start doing house parties at your house. Like I used to do them every Sunday at one o'clock, do them in the afternoon, tell people to invite all their business friends, have like barbecue, don't have too much alcohol. That's a simple, practical way to start building your network. Because what happens is if you do it every month, or I did it every week for years in Hollywood, people start bringing their friends. And the next thing you know, I got 10,000 contacts in my phone. Now, not all of them are good at business, but hundreds of them are. So anytime you need something, you're just like, doot, doot, doot. hey, who wants to buy this piece of property with me? Who wants to buy this business? Who wants to sell this company? Yo, I, my ads aren't working. Boom, what's the next trend that what's working that nobody's talking about? And people write you back in like five minutes. That's why you need a couple hundred of them. So you can just, I'll, I'll use uh, the broadcast. You know, WhatsApp has a broadcast tool. So you can stick everybody in a WhatsApp broadcast and just send out to the whole group. And out of, if 10% of people reply, that's 15 replies like that. Group chats aren't always the best. I don't like to stick all, but but sometimes I'd put sometimes in a group chat. It just depends. Okay. Idris said, Ty, so look, my syndicate, I've, I have my full syndicate. We meet three times a year. We do three, three day weekends, like Friday, Saturday, Sunday. Um, and that's 25 or $50,000. I've been doing that since 2013. Now, not all of you can afford that. I'll put a link in a second. I just built my junior syndicate where and that's only two thousand dollars i know that's a lot for some of you so it's not for everybody but i didn't want to set the price too low or else nobody wants to be in a syndicate if i charge five dollars for it nobody wants to be in a damn syndicate where everybody paid five dollars so i put it at two thousand dollars and i'll put a link in a second what's the link yeah tylopez.com slash join here i don't know let me put it here tylopez.com slash join. If you just go to Ty Lopez. By the way, if you get in the junior syndicate, the Thursday after Thanksgiving, the last Thursday of this month, I also do um, junior syndicate like dinners or like go to the laugh factory. I got one coming up this month. And I do, I try to do like three or four of those. Now you can't come to the full three day weekends unless you're in the higher level, the gold or the diamond, but get in the junior syndicate. Is the junior syndicate's good. Okay. Somebody said, Ty, it's my first real estate deal. I got suckered into buying a property which had a dog leg running between the Hatfields and the McCoys. You buy into a damn, this dude, Vermont, did you buy into a family feud? That's not good. Okay. Ty, you look so much better. Why do I look better? Because of my hair? Somebody like my hair. Who has questions on the syndicate? I want to do the third giveaway too. Who's ready to win? We'll do another 150. 
Ty, I have a rare niche Instagram channel. Most of my followers are women and mattress actresses. They are killing it on OnlyFans. You need ideas to monetize them, man. Once again. So, Justin, let me ask you. In your phone right now, do you have 150 badass multimillionaires, people with 100 million bucks that you can run that idea past? Just curious. There's no wrong answer. I'm not going to make fun of you if you don't. Ty, I'm in an insanely early niche with insane money potential. I teach people how to get into virtual solar cells. 99% of solar cells is in a home and D to D. So, Justin, how many times have you met up with 150 badasses in the last 30 days? Any way to build a syndicate through social media? Um, yeah. Yes. Time in Australia. Should I still join? Secondly, how long is it open for? Hell yeah, you should join. I, I usually come to Australia once a year, but come to the U.S. too. You need the, I got the app is approved in the app store. So when you go into the Ty Lopez app, I haven't released it yet. I haven't pressed the final approval, but by next week, I'll have it open. I'm going to stick all the smart guys that I know into this, my Ty Lopez app. And if you're in the, syn the, the syndicate, either at the junior, it goes junior level, gold or diamond. I've had the gold or diamond since 2013, but I haven't had the junior one. I'm just opening. Literally, I opened it last week. People went into it at my seminar. So where's your affiliate program? I'll put that later. Yeah, man, you need a global syndicate. I got smart people. I, I, it's funny. Once I was, re I, you know, there's a new book on Elon Musk and I was rereading the book and I was going, hmm, like, what is the real thing Elon did? Because everybody dissects Elon Musk differently and they're like oh this guy's rich because his parents had diamond mine or his grandparents had a diamond mine or oh he's super high iq oh he got lucky his dad did this that although his dad was pretty more of a abusive dude you know and then i thought um no that's none of that nobody dissected it right if you reverse engineer how to create wealth incorrectly, you end up doing it wrong and you get poor, you know? Justin said, I meet with them in person, no, but I have chats and calls with the girls. No, 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 Justin. I'm not talking about meeting up with the OnlyFans girls. That's not your, that's not your social circle. You make more money than them. How's that gonna help you? No, that is incorrect. No, I'm talking about a whole bunch. They're, they can be women, but I'm talking about business owners. You have 150 business owners that are making between 10 and $100 million each that you talk to all the time. I don't believe that. Very few people have that. I'd say it's 100th of 1% of entrepreneurs have that. Justin, you need that. Then you can ask in my junior syndicate on the app, yo, I got this. Who has ideas? You know how every breakthrough I've ever had Here's my definition of a financial breakthrough. You add a zero to your monthly income and net. So let's say you're, who here's making 10, who's making the most money on here per month on the live stream? I got, I'm streaming in five, but who's making 10, 10,000 a month with your online business? Zippos is doing 40,000 a month. I, I know you, right? Ivan, how much are you doing? Ivan's doing 10,000. Oscar on, is doing 5,000. Somebody's doing 9,000 with arbitrage. 10K a day. Okay, you're doing 300,000 a month. Somebody's doing 22,000 a month. Giovanni's doing 25,000 a month with the best name ever. Giovanni Bonvicini. Bonvicini. What is the junior syndicate? Something a tattoos artist that wants to teach and create? Hell yeah, Elvis. Elvis the Ramos. You want to be in my junior syndicate because I've been doing it since 20. I've never had it open for under $25,000, you know? Yeah, Giovanni needs to be in the junior. You already sound like you're in the mafia. You'll be the most popular person in there. You already sound like you'd be in there. We should do one. Young Shaheen says you've never met a person who earned $10 million annually. You know, I didn't meet somebody. I was probably 21 till I ever met somebody who was a millionaire. Like anybody. 
that held me back. Now people are getting rich way younger because you have access through social media to kind of a virtual mastermind. Like when I was growing up, nobody, nobody's even trying to make a million bucks from where I grew up, man. I grew up in a mobile home as a teenager. You think I was going, oh yeah, it's possible. You think my parents were going, oh yeah, Ty, here's how you create wealth. You do drop shipping, uh, social media brand. But there was none of that. Everybody's lucky now. Everybody's lucky now, but nobody's even using it. It's crazy, man. You know? Somebody said you have 20 to 50 online business owners that you also know I email, email back and forth with. Eh, email ain't going to work. You need to be meeting up with them in person. You got to make friends with people. Let me tell you something. The other day, I was talking to a dude. I went to Vegas. I spoke at this guy, Jerome Maldonado's real estate conference. He had like a thousand people there, all these big real estate investors. There was a dude I knew came up to me and he said, and I asked him, well, I don't forget what we were talking about, something business related. And he said, look, don't tell anybody this, but here's what I'm doing. So do you think he's going to tell me that over email? Email ain't going to work. People won't tell you their secrets over email unless they're idiots, right? So you have to do some of it in person and some of it you need like an anonymous app kind of things, you know? So the matrix says you're earning 40,000 a month playing mobile video games. Okay. Catch the waves doing 2000 a month. Jam Yeezy says no one's telling you secrets. Yes, they are. If you tell them some too, this guy doesn't even know. By the way, never be too cynical and never be too optimistic. It's a scientific fact that optimists die younger than pessimists. So you don't really want to be an optimist. You don't want to be a pessimist because then no matter how long you live, you have a shitty life. So what's the point? You want to be a realist. Hell yeah. People will tell you secrets if they like you and you're giving value back to them. But if you're a cynical person... They ain't going to tell you anything. You will be broke. Bro, you, I'm a realist. Most people on this live stream could create wealth, but you won't. And I know why. Because I understand the unconscious mind of humans. The unconscious mind of humans, guess what? Is not built for wealth creation. That's not in our genetic evolution to be, because most of our ancestors were either tribal hunter-gatherers or nomads. So there was no way to create wealth because you didn't have tools. And the last 10,000 generations of your great grandparents, great, great, great grandparents, it was no opportunity to create wealth. So I know if I look here at a group, if I got a thousand people live streaming, 80 20 rule, 100% of the group could take action, at most 20% will. So 200 people out of each thousand. And out of that thousand, I mean, out of that 200, there's also another 80 20 rule. So it's like 40 people out of a thousand actually do stuff because you have to know what to do and then do it. So about 20% of a thousand people will actually go, yeah, I'm going to pay attention. I'm going to listen. I'm going to learn out of that 200 people, 20% of them will actually stick to it. I know the unconscious, I'm an expert at studying the unconscious mind of humans. Some people call it the subconscious. I like to use the more old school term, the unconscious mind, what Freud studied, what Jung studied, you know, the unconscious mind is what actually drives you much more. I was reading a textbook by Jung. Actually, I woke up at like four in the morning today and uh, I just start. Sometimes I'll wake up and I'll read for like 30 minutes and I'll go back to sleep. So I was just reading. Uh, this is a great book, by the way. I like to have my network full of the greatest thinkers of all time. That's the only reason I read books. It's better to have an in-person mafia. Okay. It's better to have that, like what Elon Musk had. But if you can't, you know, I can't bring back to life Carl Jung. But here's an interesting thing I was reading. I keep it on my phone. It's called Psychological Types. There's all my bookmarks. Um, he was talking about the two types of unconscious mind. One is a thinker. One is a feeler. And how society breaks into roughly, there's introverted thinkers, extroverted thinkers, introverted you know, feelers, extroverted feelers. And so he created this typology, personality types. And so I know the personality types of the people that are on this live call. Some of you are introverted um, feelers. Introverted feelers oftentimes struggle with actually making money because you're introverted. So you, you're afraid you have like social anxiety 
for interacting with other people. On top of that, you're more feeling based. So you're not based off reflection and logic. You're often just based upon how you feel in the moment and how you feel in the moment is unrelated to wealth creation. In fact, it's anti wealth creation because humans are built multiple times uh, to change emotions multiple times per day. You know, somebody said, you remind me of Rene Lassad. You mean my student who worked for me for years? You mean he reminds you of me? Don't be put, you all get confused who the OG is. I'm the OG. <laughs> That's like going to a kid and go, your father looks like you. No, Rene worked for me. He learned from me. The reason you, you think we sound similar is because he sounds like me. <laughs> okay. Um, so when it comes to personality types, I'm never trying to make, some people go, Ty, does your courses work for everybody? No. How could they work for everybody? 50% of the world is an introverted feeler. So they're, how, they, how is a person who's dominated by their emotions ever going to stick to something through the tough times, man? Come on. That ain't going to work. All people who make money actually push through their feelings. It's okay to have feelings. I don't think you should become a full robot. But you know what I'm saying? So that doesn't work, man. That doesn't work. So, um, okay. Let me, okay. By the way, for those of you in the junior syndicate, I'm going to be sharing. I don't like to share. This video ad is so good. I don't want, I don't want to share it with all my followers. I'm like, fuck that. This is an ad that will work. I always tell people I'm up front. I don't share everything I know with everybody. Sometimes people are like, Ty, Ty doesn't share everything he knows about creating wealth with all of his 8 million followers. I'm like, you are correct. I have already said that. I already, sometimes people try to like accuse me like, Ty, nobody who's smart shares everything with everybody. I'm like, you are correct. But I share a lot. I'm blunt. But I do share pe with people who are like, you know, that's why I charge money. I'm like, if you pay me, I'm going to share with you. That's kind of an alliance. You know, everybody wants something for nothing. I'm like, you're not giving me anything. Why do I have to give you all my secrets? No, hell no. I don't agree with that. You know, I do not agree with that. But people who actually signal, it's called signaling. You know, in your life, each of you needs to do signaling. If you have a family member that says they have your back, but then that person never actually helps you. They're signaling their unconscious mind. They don't care about you. One of the biggest mistakes that all of you make is you operate when you read other people with their conscious mind. I don't. And in general, people are opposite what their conscious mind tells you. People will literally tell you, I care about you. I'm loyal to you. But I see this in dating. Guys are idiots sometimes. They're dating a girl who everybody, all their friends know the girl doesn't like them. I have a private client program. People pay me between 100 grand and a million to do eight calls a year with them. Okay? I've been doing this also since 2013. This is for high-level entrepreneurs. Most of those people are doing at least 50 million in revenue and at least like 10 million in profit. Some of the most famous people you all know on social media are in my program. I talk to them once a month. Anyway, I was talking to a dude and he was, he was in love with this girl and I do a shadowing program for these people that pay a hundred grand to a million. And I'm like, they come with me once, once a year. So I said, bring this girl to dinner. So we're at dinner. I'm sitting here. I look at a girl. If she likes you, her pupils will dilate unconsciously. Okay. Unconsciously. So I'm watching her look at him all night. Not one time did her pupils dilate. Not one time did her eyes get, a girl, if she likes you, will also, her eyes will, she'll open her eyes a little bit more. Not crazy. If you get a girl to go like, like that, she's probably insane. But it just gets a tad bit different. It's a subtle micro cue, okay? At the end of, at the, end of the day, I told her, this girl doesn't like you, man. She doesn't like you. She's not attracted to you. She's a gold digger. She likes you because of money. And he's, he, he stayed in that relationship for another long time. All this horrible stuff happened financially for him. Just like, and he came to me about six months later, like, man, you were right. How did you know? 
And I'm like, behavior is better than words. She was telling him that she liked him, but she wasn't signaling with behavioral patterns. So you have to be the master at behavioral patterns, man. That's why I build a junior. Sometimes people are like, Ty, you're selling stuff. Yeah, I'm selling stuff because people who buy my stuff are signaling that they're interested in business partnerships and alliances with me. You know how many people call me and say, Ty, I'll give you 50% of my business if you will be my business partner and use your social media to blow me up and blow my products up? I'm like, yes, I charge a million bucks. You pay me a million bucks, I'll become your business partner. I've dropped 50 million bucks promoting my personal brand over the years. Why do I have to give it to you for free? And people say, yes, I have partnerships with people that paid a million bucks. Uh, and I use my social media. I was just with a dude who's made like 10 million back from the million he paid. So people go, that's not fair. You should do it for free. Why? There's no rule. People, and you should follow this advice. People who are doing nothing for you, you have no obligation for them. And you become a sucker. One of my mentors used to say, Ty, if you're in a room playing poker at a table, He's like, after five minutes looking around, you don't know who the sucker at the table is. You are the sucker. They invited you to take your money. If you don't know, at a poke, always at a poker table, there's one or two people that don't know anything about poker and they got invited because they're rich and all the other dudes want to take their money. That's it. Every house poker game in LA, all the big cities, people are invited. I know a guy, he invites big celebrities. I won't say the name. He's taken $30 million from one of the most famous A-list Hollywood celebrities over the last like six years. 30 million. You know why they invite that dude? He's a famous actor. Every, 100% of you know him. And my friend's like, bro, we, we invite that guy and we let him win sometimes. <laughs> they don't play that hard. They're like, he goes crazy. He comes back every year. We extract, you know, like 5 million bucks from him. He comes like every week that he's in town. He shoots a lot of movies. And they're like, every week he's losing like two to five hundred thousand dollars. Now like we he's a, my friend has made thirty million dollars. I don't know how much the other people made. So that's an analogy for life, man. Like a lot of you are invited to other people's table because you're the sucker. I see that all the time. People go, oh Ty, I don't need to buy anything. I can just Google and YouTube it. Okay. You really think Google and YouTube is free? They're manipulating your mind with their algorithm so they can sell your eyeballs, your attention to advertisers. Who's the top 10 wealthiest people in the world? The owners of Google and YouTube. There's nothing free. There's nothing free. There's nothing free. So people go, ah, oh, I'm getting free stuff here. I'm not going to buy a book. I'm not going to buy a court. Great. But you will be monetized. You will be monetized on every free platform. You are monetized. Wealthiest people in the world. One owns Twitter X, a social media platform that's supposedly kind of free, although now they're charging money. Number two, Instagram and Facebook and WhatsApp, by the way, supposedly free, yet magically the owner has become almost the wealthiest young person in history. Number three is like TikTok. Dude, they spent 18 bill last year on marketing. Think how much money they made. The whole Chinese government is benefiting from American and other European eyeballs. It ain't free. You're the sucker in the room. So that's why I said you have to take back your social circle and your time and your attention. And the best way is to pay for something. I do it all the time, man. I'm at this little retreat golf course hotel right now. We're finishing up my book. I don't walk in here and go, I'm not going to pay for it. I specifically pick this place because I like the people here. It's a good country club. I always meet some business people here. And so I can get a cheaper place. You can get a cheap Airbnb. You can sleep on somebody's bunk bed, but you ain't getting value. So it's important. Some of you are so tricked. It's, it's you know, I built this syndicate. I'm like, this junior syndicate is going to change the game for people. I guarantee you. You go through my syndicate, by the way, I'll read off the names of people who got in. Dr. Joe Gaeta, welcome to the group. You know, what is up, my friend? He's in LA. Oh, I like doctors coming in. So 
I hope you'll be there. It's uh, Thursday, the last Thursday of this month. We do stuff online. We do stuff in person. How do you get in again? We'll put the link. I'm going to put about 2,500 people in this global junior syndicate. That way there's enough people in every country. And I travel the whole world. I'm on most every continent every year. I've been in Asia this year. Um, I've been in South America this year. I've been in North America. I've been in Europe. The only place I haven't really been is like, I haven't been in, the only big continent I haven't been to is, is uh, Antarctica. I don't have a big following there. We're going to have to work on our Antarctica advertising. And uh, in Africa, I'm going to start coming to Africa more. But anyway, okay, um, we're going to go to session three here, but let's, who has some questions? Cool questions. Somebody said, Ty, you're not going anywhere if World War III starts. You are correct, sir. Thank you. Ty, how can we join the senior syndicate? Okay, if you want to be in the senior syndicate, just join the junior syndicate now, and then my team will call you and you can apply. We'll count all the money you paid in the junior towards the senior. Yeah, you all should be in, I mean, ideally, if you can afford it, you want to be in the in the gold. Or I just, for example, a guy just came into the diamond level of my syndicate where we do three weekends a year together, this group. I mean, dude, this guy's making, <laughs> he started buying up offices in Los Angeles. He bought one office for $200,000. These are working medical practices, but you don't even have to be a doctor. He bought the real estate. He did it for like two, 300,000, took over the lease. Some of them he buys the real estate on average are worth 2 million. He's 10 X his money in like three years. That's a guy you want to meet. And he's not going to come and tell the whole world all of his stuff. It's, it's crazy. I'll tell you this. All this free advice, people, people are getting suckered, man. People aren't giving you good free advice. Yeah, I, Mark Cuban did a thing and he goes, nobody's going to give you their secrets. If you pay, they will. Warren Buffett, Charlie Munger has a book you can buy and he gives you his secrets. But he ain't going to give it to you for free. I mean, he does a few interviews a year, like one a year. But he doesn't tell you stuff. But that's a, that's a syndicate I'd like to be in, the Warren Buffett one, dude. If you had to start all over again, what would you do? Uh, I'd go shadow somebody who is in the industry and making at least 10 mil a year. I mean, if you ask me what I would do financially, there's a lot of stuff I'd do different romantically, socially and stuff. Yeah, but if I was doing, like if I was literally starting over again financially, I was 18 years old again. I would go shadow somebody. I'd be like, I'd say, hey, I'll carry, I'll get you donuts or whatever you do. I'll be your personal assistant. I won't charge you any money. Just if you can pay me a little bit of money so I'm not homeless, but pay for my travel, travel with a real estate person, travel with an e-com person. Just be like, yo, I'm there. I'm setting up your cameras. I'm carrying your luggage. Just like they make pro basketball players or pro athletes do when you're your you're rookie season. And I'd follow that person. And But here's the key. I'd make friends with all their friends. I'd make friends with all their friends. That's where people go wrong. They start shadowing one person. One person doesn't have all the ideas. I'd create my own little, by the time, if I'd started at 18, by the time I was 21, I did this, by the way. By the time I was 21, I'd have a syndicate of, you know, 150 people that I met through that one dude. I'd have 150 of those in my phone where I'd add value. I'd be a connector. You can also just add value by connecting. I could take person 131 who's in, I don't know, who's selling in a clothing line. And I'd be like, yo, I know a guy, number 17 in my syndicate. Let me connect you two together. You guys have lunch. The person who becomes the connector also is loved by the whole group. You see what I'm saying? So from that 150 people, I could build an empire. I'd have alliances. I'd have business partners. I'd have investors. I'd have people sharing their insider secrets. Everything in this world's insider secrets, man. Why do you think Nancy, wasn't it Nancy Pelosi, who's a senator in America, and she is now worth like $200 million trading on the stock market? How do you think she figured out which stocks to buy? You think she just did that by like reading some, Oh, she subscribes to a free YouTube channel and she gets advice on trading. Hell no. She gets insiders to tell her what the hell is going to win. Now, I don't know if she does full-on insider trading, but people do the gray area stuff where they're like, mm, well, I heard this through the grapevine and blah, blah, blah. People do little nudges like, oh, 
I see, you know, Apple's doing that. And then, and then like, people take the hint. So, like, now, now, come on. And, and people get mad about it. But that's how the way the world's been going for, like, 10,000 years. So, you can do it legally. I'm not talking about doing insider information like Martha Stewart did. I don't even know if she did it. But, no. Ty, what's the best advice you ever heard? <sighs> To get what you want, you have to deserve what you want. The world's not yet a stupid enough place to reward a whole bunch of undeserving people. That's a fucking saying you should get. I see people with weird ass tattoos. I'm like, look, if you're going to get a tattoo, at least get a tattoo that reminds you of something. People putting demons on their body. I'm like, what are you doing? Like, what is the point? You know what I mean? You can be 75 with a demon in your gram. No, no hate. If you got a demon face tattoo, Probably means you have a lot of demons. But if you're going to tattoo your stuff, like remind yourself, put put something, put the birthday of your grandma or something, respect your ancestors or something, or put a damn saying there. So for the rest of your life, when you get lost, you look down and go, it's like your compass, you know, to get what you want, you have to deserve what you want. The world's not yet a crazy enough place to reward a whole bunch of undeserving people. You see what I mean? Somebody said you definitely got a lot of demons if you're tattooing demons. That's right. Ty, monetary advice for a Nigerian freelancer. What do you what's your freelancing? Is SaaS oversaturated? No. No, no, no. Nothing's oversaturated if you know what you're doing. That's what I'll do. My mentor used to say the cream always rises to the top of the milk. <laughs> if you milk a cow. You stick that raw milk in a jug, you wake up in the morning, the cream, even if there's only a little bit of cream, it always rises to the top. What does that mean? That means in any industry, that's the milk. Even if it's a whole bunch of milk in there, the best will rise to the top and will still win. In fact, 60% of billionaires made their money in red, ta in red oceans. A red ocean is a highly competitive industry. Only 40% of wealth is created in new blue ocean ideas. Ty, do you have a new insight which took you years to learn? Yes. Uh, the number one way to understand unconscious mind of humans is by risk tolerance levels. So the biggest thing you can learn if you want to read people is the risk tolerance levels of humans. And I keep it simple. There's low risk takers, medium and high. Everything you want to know, for the most part, more important than if somebody's an introvert or extrovert, if they're Machiavellian, if they're narcissistic, they're psychopathic, if they even if they have high anxiety, Anxiety is a big predictor of behavior. I put anxiety as number two. If I'm trying to read people now, this took me many years as somebody who's a professional at reading people. Number one thing I want to know first is where do they fall in the risk tolerance? Most people are medium or low risk takers. Okay. Nature slash God disperses genes. You're kind of born with it. It's very genetic, by the way. It's very genetic. And people try to argue with me that, but biology would break down if almost everything was not genetic. It has to be genetic or biology fails. You have to be an inherited uh, genetic. Biology says people who reproduce correctly win. That's what it says. That's the tough truth that nobody wants. The people who reproduce more intelligently than others win in all species. A gorilla female who mates with the correct gorilla male her genes survive. And so if there was no inheritance of personality characteristics, all of science would break down. I was actually, I emailed Dr. Buss the other day because I was like, man, the world's driving me crazy. I was like, isn't it true that for biology to work, that things have to be evolutionarily or genetically passed down, including anger levels, risk levels, anxiety levels. Now they're not a hundred percent genetic, there is environmental variation. IQ is not 100% genetic, but it is very genetic, probably like 0.6 or 0.7 correlation. That means 60 to 70% of your intelligence or a group, your whole family's intelligence is based upon your ancestors. That, that's pretty accepted. There's not many smart people who argue that. But what we're finding now is everything is genetic, meaning how much risk you're willing to take. That's, you inherit this so high, and you find this in minnows, little fish like goldfish, uh, in certain parts of the world, the minnows who live downstream 
are lower risk takers than the ones who live where the waterfall is, for example. And they pass on their low risk taking genes to their minnow guppy babies. This is classic textbooks. They've studied this for centuries or a century, we could say. So the biggest thing that I've learned in all, look, I'm going to tell you this right now. For example, I told people, I've got a group. It's $2,000. Um, it's a one-year program. You're going to get access to me in person. You're going to get access to my inner circle of the smartest business people I know in the world. The high risk takers buy first. Like this guy, I was just reading some of the names of people who got in, uh, Dr. Joe Gata in LA. He can be a higher risk taker. Some of you want to get in. You even have the money. You're not going to do it. I know I used to get frustrated with people and say, oh, well, you know, I'm frustrated at people. Everybody's a procrastinator. Everybody, But now that's what a lot of gurus are saying online. It's actually not true. Now I know genetically some people just born to not be able to do as big a things as others. They're not going to do it. Elon Musk is a trick. If you really want to be wealthy, there's basically nobody who's ultra wealthy who's not relative high risk taker. Now on a one to a hundred, you should not be a 100 risk taker. If you're too much of a risk taker, you fall off a cliff and die. Okay, but in general, most people on the Forbes list are going to be a 60 to a 90. Elon Musk is in the 90s. He's an absolute risk taker. First time I ever saw him talk at a little fireside dinner um, in Santa Monica in 2011 or 2012, he said, like, I sold PayPal, made a, like 130 million after tax. And I invested all of it into Tesla and SpaceX. And I was borrowing money to pay rent on my apartment in Malibu. That's a high risk taker. So he's probably a 90 out of 100. Um, but some of you are like a 20 out of 100. I don't even know the solution. My solution is don't try to get ultra wealthy. It's okay. Not everybody needs to be a billionaire. Somebody's going to low risk taker change. I'm not a big fan of trying to change adults. The actual recipe for a horrific life is changing adults. So maybe you can change people younger. It's like the famous Bible saying says, or proverb, woe to the man who tries to teach someone before they're ready to learn. Although I'm not sure that's the Bible. Maybe that's a, a well, who, who said that? Woe to the man who tries to teach somebody re earlier than they're ready to learn. Yeah, maybe it's King Solomon. So I think for a lot of you, know thyself. If you're a medium risk taker, you could get into my junior syndicate. If you're a low risk taker, you probably just give up, do some, buy my ebook for seven bucks. It will help you less, but it'll help you somewhat, you know? Also, um, it very, I can predict people's risk patterns by asking what their parents did for a living. So Elon Musk, Bill Gates, dad was an aggressive lawyer and also very wealthy. So it's no mistake that Bill Gates became a wealthy, aggressive person. He's extremely aggressive. And, uh, and by nature, if you're a lawyer, like an actual, not a contract lawyer, but you're actually like a courtroom trial type lawyer or litigation, by nature, you're aggressive. So you're a higher risk taker. Um, and so I, I think know thy parents, you know. And I'll tell you uh, one thing to do. You low risk takers, get your ass partnered with a medium to high risk taker. <laughs> if you're a low risk taker, uh, partner with somebody, man. Partner. Sorry, my connection is not good. How much is the junior syndicate? It's two grand. We also have uh, multiple payment plans. It's not a lot. It's a, But I'm not ever going to do a syndicate group for lower than that. Why would I make a group that's so in it? Do you want to be in a group that's only $5? That's, that's why like I go... Like I go, for example, in LA for years, I go to this charity thing for like the Clippers. Um, and, you know, average person is is donating like $250,000 to charity there, right? But in that room, I've made some of my best contacts. Like I know Steve Ballmer, he's worth $110 billion. So you got to be in a room that's hard to get into. So people are always like, what's an easy way to get in the room with the right person. Why would a badass go in an easy room? Okay. So I have the 25,000, 50,000. Some of you get in. I usually don't talk about that and sell that on live calls, but I just built this junior one, you know?
high risk taker. That's a good life lesson. The way you asked how much for dinner. Sorry, I'm reading some of these. Ty, how do you navigate the balance between innovation and stability in a rapidly changing business landscape? Chris Turk, man, his business environment is going to be wild. I predict the next 10 years is going to be the wildest time in business history. For people trying to make money, it, it, you better get good because it's going to be, it's so hyper competitive. Think of it this way. What's easier to become? A pro basketball player in the U.S. or a pro football soccer player? What's easier? So when I say football, I'm talking about soccer. What's easier? Raise your hand. What's easier? Let's do, I'll tell you how to figure this out easy. How many pro basketball players are in the world versus how many pro football soccer players are there in the world? So this is chat GPT. This will tell you everything you need to know. It's way easier to become a pro football soccer player. There's like some wacky number. There's 450 pro NBA basketball players. There's 10,000 pro soccer players. 10,000. So think about this. This guy's asking me how to make money in the next 10 years, the next two years, the next one year, the next two months. How many people are online? Well, let's say 2 billion people are online right now with, with fast internet. You can't count people who got, you know, horrible internet. 300,000 new people are coming online every day. Every day. And they're all wanting money. They're, the one thing humans have in common, there's not a person you're ever going to meet that has zero care about money because they'll die of starvation. Not everybody's money greedy, hungry, but everybody, not everybody cares about basketball. Not everybody cares about music. Not everybody cares about sport. Not everybody cares about art. Not everybody cares about their shoes, their clothing. 100% of people care about money though. So out of those 300,000 people, I can predict all of them are going to think about building an online business. All of them. Now, most of them, but let's say 80-20 rule. 20% 20 of them try it. That's 60,000 people new a day, not counting all the old people that are getting smarter and smarter. So that's why when I meet people, I'm like, are you committed to, if you want to make above average money, so what's the definition? In America, let's say above average money is, I don't know, 150. I mean, the actual average is much lower, but let's just say when people start feeling like they got, they're making a little bit of money, let's just say 150,000 a year. If you live in another country, depending on where it could be lower, okay? Well, everybody wants that. Everybody. And so 10 years ago when I started, it was so much easier to make 100 grand a month. Like I remember in 2012, I went live at 100 people on a, there, there wasn't even live streaming. So there was WebEx. I used WebEx. It was like corporate software. And I went live and I made $100,000 with 100 people on. I didn't even know what I was doing. I was just like, lol. That's when I was like, wait a second, personal brand. I can make a lot of money. I remember that's when it clicked. I can't remember if it was 2012 or 2013, but it was one of those years because I was living up in the Hollywood Hills and it wasn't the first year. I moved in there in 09. So it was a couple of years after. I had a basement where I built a little studio. I had all my books behind me and I was like, I'm just going to try live streaming, see if I can make a little money. And that was, I was like, oh shit, I'm making 100 G's in an hour. And it was all profit. I spent no money on marketing. So it was a hundred thousand with a hundred thousand profit. And, um, but now if you go live right now, there's 10,000 people live right now. Back then there was literally zero people probably live that one hour selling something in the business training space, zero. So what is it going to be in a year? What's it going to be in two years? You're going to get killed if you're not committed to Continual self-improvement. You better go to bed smarter every day. You better expand the people you know. It's not just what you know, even though that is important. You better have good habits, daily routine. You better know how to disconnect from social media so you're not spending all day scrolling, getting your eyes monetized like a sucker. Uh, you better be traveling, seeing what trends are working in other countries, bringing them back to your country or your city. Um, you better not be too cynical. If you're too skeptical, by the time you realize something works, there's 50,000 people doing it and it's too late. 
So you can have a little skepticism, but you can't be too high. On a one to 10, if you're more like five is average skepticism, if you're anything higher than a five, you're going to get crushed. Okay. You'll get crushed. You'll, you'll be broke. Yeah, I'll be done here. I'll go meet him. So it's, you better be reading audiobooks. When you're in the gym, you better not just be listening to music. Okay. You better have good sleep habits because the brain shuts down when you're not getting, let's say, 100 to 150 minutes of deep sleep every night. It's not so many, it's not just hours, it's the quality of deep sleep. You know, so you're going to be boom. You're going to be done. 48 Laws of Power. That's okay book. I don't agree with all that book. That's a very Machiavellian book. Doesn't completely work. Someone said, Ty, I saw your interview on Nomad Capitalist. Yeah. So, okay. Last questions. Who has some questions on getting in the junior syndicate? And then we've got our session three coming next. It's a free session. What's your best personal insights that made the biggest difference in the quality of your life? Like I said, sleep 100, try to sleep 150 minutes deep every night. I got a ring that I track. Um, continually add people who like you, who are, make more friends with people who are actually not just like, just bringing you social fun, but actually contribute to building your life, you know? Um, Limit your social media. Don't only do 20 minutes a day of scrolling on social media. Unless you're using it to make money, then you can do hours. Okay. Um, realize that the worst people are the loudest in terms of criticizing you. Okay. So you want the criticism of the quietest people you know. You want the criticism. You need to ask for criticism, but from the quiet people. It's kind of like on TikTok. It's always the dumbest people who are talking shit it's always so you got to learn but, but you need criticism but it's always the lowest iq people that are loud with criticism the smart people that's who you want criticizing you those people are too busy so unless you ask them you're gonna have to beg them you're gonna say bro i know you're my friend i know you're busy but please will you tell me what the hell i'm doing wrong and be ruthless with me you got to beg them because all the people that freely give you criticism are never smart. Just never. It's not possible. Why would a smart person give you criticism unsolicited? You're automatically low IQ because if you're smart, you're putting your attention into your own family and social circle. So any random person who criticizes you is by definition a dumb dumb. Do you ever do you see Dave? Is Mark Zuckerberg is worth like <laughs> is worth like 50 billion when he was like 31? Did you see him ever commenting on people's stuff? He was busy building an empire. You think Jeff Bezos would do comment? He don't have time, but that's who you want to criticize you. If you could have met Steve Jobs, you'd be like, Steve Jobs, I'm building an app. Can you please tear my app to shreds, please? So that's a critical one, man, because a lot of you, as you grow your personal brand, you're going to get butt hurt. Man, I, I own personalbrand.io. I teach a lot of people how to build a personal brand. 80% of the big personal brands you follow are all my students. 80% of them. 80. You name a person that you're following. It's like 80% of them are in my database for years. They've been in my courses at my house. People getting butt hurt out here. I remember there's a guy you all know, a big, he's an, a fitness guy. I remember him texting me in like 2017, like, bro, I'm about to delete my accounts. I don't know why. He's like, dude, I, this other huge influencer is like bringing like nasty disparagement of my name. I told him, bro, this too will pass. Go think about something else. Sure enough, he just listened to me and, and just, this will pass. You know, this will pass. And sure enough, it passed and the guy's 10 times wealthier now. Um. So this tool will pass. Everybody, you guys are commenting. I won't, I won't speak to specific. There's nobody. I mean, there's a few influencers. Gary V was before me, so he wasn't one of my students. 
Joe Rogan was way before me. There's people. I wasn't the first, but I was in the first wave, you know? Okay. Emotion ruin everything. It takes emotional intelligence. Here's the thing. There's two types of emotional people on this call. There's two types. So emotional person, number one, is ruled and controlled by their emotion. That's the worst to be. The second harnesses emotion like you harness a horse. Like I have 30 horses on my farm, one of my farms. The most powerful horse I have, if you can harness that horse, is the fastest horse ever. <laughs> I have a horse called Czar. I named him Czar. Well, I bought him from an Amish guy. He was already named Czar. Spelled C-S-A-R, like the Czars of Russia. You could spell C-Z-A-R or C-S-R. He's the fastest horse, man. It, it, we bought him off a racetrack. He was kind of retired off a racetrack. He's like, he, you know, horses are the most emotional farm animal. There's nothing like a horse. Like, they'll kill you. Like you could feed a horse every day. You scare a horse, walk up behind it, make a loud noise. It might kick you and kill you in one kick. I got big Belgian 2,000-pound horses. So the kick in the face is the emotion you don't want. The harnessing the horse, getting on top of the horse, riding the horse. I used to ride the horse to this other farm, which was seven miles away. That is a horse that changed, that transformed my life. Instead of walking, I got there. You know, a good horse will run 15 miles an hour for a long time, 12. It depends if you have like a saddle bread, standle bread, what kind of horse you have. They can reach higher top speeds, right? But a lot of you, the emotion is, is kicking you in the face versus you harnessing it. And that's what I was saying about risk tolerance. Some of you are so dominated by fear and skepticism that you don't realize you got kicked in the face by your own emotion. And it's genetic. It's a family curse. See, genes can be a family curse. Some of you have a family curse. Look at your parents. You'll see all kinds. You will re I don't even need to meet most of you. Just let me meet your two parents. Or let me meet your four grandparents or let me meet your eight great grandparents or let me meet four of your uncles and aunts you're 25 percent related to your uncle and aunt or let me re meet eight of your cousins you're 12 and a half percent related to your you know your first cousin or you're 6.5 6.25 percent related to your first cousin once removed or let me meet your identical twin because identical twins are about 99 percent so I don't even need to meet you. People, you ever met somebody who's like, you don't even know me. I'm like, bitch, I don't need, you're an automaton. I can just meet your two parents and pretty much predict almost everything about you. Not everything. I don't know what shoes you're wearing, but that's unimportant. But I can, I know the important things. I know your skepticism level. I know your innovation level. I know your IQ. I probably know your height. I know your capacity to put on muscle. I know your um, risk tolerance levels. I can pretty much predict um your agreeableness levels your emotionality levels your dark triad levels narcissism if i meet somebody who's a narcissist i can look like a genius by just saying oh which of your parents is a narcissist a hundred percent of the time they're like how do you know my mom was one because i'm like because you're one and narcissism is like 0.68 to 0.78 heritable that's high shoe size how tall is your mom and dad king of winter I can pretty much predict. I can't predict it down to the exact, but I can know. I don't know if you got little bitty, you know, little fairy feet, or if I know you got big ass Sasquatch feet. Which do you have? Your mom or dad more like a Sasquatch, Bigfoot, or more like a little, you know, pygmy? Who knows? I can guess your. What do you think Shaq's kids' shoe size is? Shaq's daughter's out here dunking. You know. Okay. Idris says your dad wears 45. Well, if you're using U.S. shoes, you got the biggest dad mankind has ever met. You wear 12s, Rick? Yeah, I think 45 or 12. What's your dad wear, Rick? What size shoe your dad have? You wear 12s, U.S.? Oh, so you have bigger feet than your dad. Okay. He was taller than He's taller than you. So you got the feet. You got the size in the feet. He got, he, he's like, what, six one or something? Yeah, that's funny. Okay, last questions. We're going to the next session.
Any advice for a broke dog trainer from Peru living in Canada? Was it okay to move from Peru? Sure. Changing your geography is one of the greatest ways to change your life. Change your, that's something I've learned. That's a hard lesson nobody talks about. Change your geography to change your life. People are like, I can't find someone to date. I can't make any money. You live in the wrong place. <laughs> Simple as that. It does matter where you live because your social circle, like when I'm in the places that I know the most people, I'm the most innovative because I have dinner with dudes and I'm like, he's like, bro, look at this little, you know, look at this setting I'm putting on my Facebook ads. And I lifted my conversion rate by 15%. Look at how I changed my pixel. Look at this new way of setting up Google Analytics. Look at this heat map trafficking that I'm doing. Look at this better email provider that's getting me an e inbox is better. Look at this SMS marketing technique I'm using. Look at this product that I found from this vendor 20% cheaper for drop shipping. You know? Like, who? you have to have that in your life, man. You have to have that in your life. Okay. In the Zoom group, who is interested in getting in? Who's in on the who's yes, no, or on the fence of getting in the junior syndicate? Yes, no, or on the fence? Patrick's on the fence. Brandon Yang's can't get in. Idris 2006 is yes. What if you live in the right place, but you're fully stuck? Move. Sean Neal's Artemis, yes. How much is it? It's two thousand dollars a year, and there or there's a payment plan. It's tylopez.com/slash/join. How to flip twenty thousand ROI? Are you talking about real estate? I don't know what you're saying. You said how to flip twenty k ROI twenty five over one to two months. Can you join if you're in Nigeria? Yep. If you're in Nigeria, take. I just had a guy at my LA seminar two weeks ago from Nigeria making a million bucks a year. He's a doctor there, but he's built an online business. And he's like my biggest fan. He almost started crying on stage. If you can't afford it, can you start something cheaper? Yeah, you can go buy my book. I got my book. Pre-order it. It's coming out next week. It's, it's written. I got it right here. It's such a good book. But it's not going to help you. As much as here's the book, the three trends. I just got to edit it down. I'm going to use chat GPT to correct all the grammar. It is, it's a smaller book. I didn't want it too big. So currently it's 15,303 words. Okay. And it'll have for seven bucks, you get the ebook and the audio. I'm going to read it so you can listen, or you can get the um, physical books, like an extra 10 or 20 bucks, depending on the shipping cost. Ty, what's your top criteria for a mentor? I don't want them to be really that anxious to mentor me. I will mentor you all who get in this syndicate program. First thing I'm going to do for those of you who get in this junior syndicate is send you this ad. This is an ad I'm not going to share. This is the best ad of 2023. The best ad. I had another one that was a hair one that was pretty good. This is the best ad of 2023. I'm going to share that to people who are in my syndicate. I'm not sharing it with everybody or else everybody's going to copy it. It'll stop working. This ad right here, it's two minutes. I immediately screen uh, screen share or screen download. It's this one. Some of you will figure out how to find it, but it's not on their Instagram. It's just an ad. And a lot of times ads don't show on the actual Insta feed. Where is the damn thing? Where is it? It's on. Can you bump it? It's a long ad too. It's a great lesson. A lot of you are making too short of ads. This is an a two minute and like one, two minute and five second ad. So I'll be sharing that in the syndicate. I'll email it to you. And also my app, my Ty Lopez app is coming out. There'll be a syndicate section that only the syndicate people can see. Here it is, two minutes and 10 seconds. I'll let y'all hear it. It's never heard of the Sugar Research Foundation. Back in the 60s, they were funding studies that were downplaying sugar's role in heart disease, shifting the blame to fats. Talk about a sweet cover-up. Now the FDA is doing the same with cell phones, but should we trust them? Hey. Somebody said, ad will show in the public ad library. Good luck finding that. <laughs> Good luck, my friend. And I'm going to give you commentary on it, too. Good luck. You ain't going to find that. You know how many ads are in the damn ad library? And they probably had 10 variations. That's the variation you want. 
Can you get a PDF or online book? Yeah, on the book, you'll have that. It's not even about sugar, but they bring it together. So I'm a, I'm a master of dissecting ads, dude. Ads I've done you know, ads that have done hundreds of millions of dollars in sales, more than that. So is there a good way to change the tendency of risk taking? Look, take a bigger risk. All you low risk takers are like, how can you change your life? How can you be? You can't make money as a low risk taker. You can live a good life though, but you can't make real money. There's no real money makers that are low risk tolerance. And some of you are low risk tolerance people, man. I remember Donald Trump, best thing I ever read in a Donald Trump book, he said he had a, he had bet everything on a couple of businesses and he was a billion dollars in personal debt. He had personally guaranteed, he, Donald Trump said he walked by a homeless man and he realized that homeless man was a billion dollars richer than he was. And he said he slept like a baby that night. He had no problem sleeping. Then he said he had a friend who was a college professor who had a like $300,000 mortgage and used to confess to Donald Trump, man, every month I'm stressed out. What if I lose my job? I won't be able to make my $5,000 a month. That's low risk taker versus high. And I'm not saying you got to be Donald Trump. And I'm not saying there's anything wrong with the low risk taker, but who you think actually makes money in life? They no low risk taker person who's freaked out about that. So it's, this is the biggest kind of insight for myself as I've been, you know, I've tested hundreds of thousands of people. I own 12types.com. You can see on there, you can take some of my quizzes that I built. They're free. And I've tested basically more people than any psychologist. Like Carl Jung didn't have internet, so he couldn't test hundreds of thousands of people. Um, and one of the biggest insights is the number one, it, there's too much talk about extrovert, introvert, and all the ENFJ, ENTP, INFJ, the 16 personalities. All that shit doesn't help people. The biggest thing to know is actually your level of risk tolerance. Once you know that, then the second most important thing to know about yourself is your anxiety level. Then the third is to know your four M's motivation, which are the dominant unconscious motivations. So on the four M's, you have money, uh, material things, mating, movement slash freedom, and mastery slash status. Those are the three dominant things. And after that, you want to know your dark triad scores. Those are the three. You can do dark dyad. That's not as important. You do your narcissism, Machiavellian psychopathy. After that, you want to know your conscientious levels. There's four levels of conscientiousness, perfectionism, organization, diligence, prudence. After that, you probably want to know a score called your openness to new experience. That's, you know, aesthetics. That's creativity. Then after that, you want to know your um, extroversion, introversion scores, but not how people think about it. There's something called social boldness, liveliness. Um, and so, so uh, social self-esteem, things like that. After that, you probably want to know your agreeableness levels. That's forgiveness, stubborn, uh, forgiveness, flexibility, slash stubbornness, things like that. Um, you know, because if you don't have the correct agreeable levels, you'll get fucked over. But if you're too cynical, which means low agreeableness, then you will too quickly cut people off that might have good ideas. The cynics, the, the overly optimistic person is too gullible. They have very high agreeableness. The cynical pessimist is very low on agreeableness. Therefore, they never believe anything somebody tells them. So somebody's like, yo, there's a good thing you can do. Be, you know, build a podcast like in 2013. I was telling people, you should have a podcast. And people wouldn't do it. And back then, it was easier to be the number one. Uh, some For some years, I was number one or number two business podcast. Now, there's like 700,000 podcasts. So when you're low agreeable, you miss the trend. So all of these, you can break down into a science knowing thyself. But knowing thyself is the most powerful thing, you know? Somebody said, nice wig, bro. I love that compliment. If any of you ever get complimented like, oh, that dude's on steroids and you're not on steroids, for some of you guys that are naturally muscular, that's a great compliment. If people ever say you're a nerd, that's a great compliment. That's how dumb people um try to compensate for being dumb they call other people nerds okay that's a great compliment if people say you have a wig which i don't think i have a wig at least i've never put on a wig but maybe i could that's a great compliment that means you got hair you know so <laughs> means you're doing something right plus a lot of that's genes though so effectively improve one's risk tolerance if you're low risk just take some risk Believe it or not, you can slightly alter your score. 
if on a one to a hundred of risk tolerance, you're low, let's say you're like a 30, you could bump yourself into the medium range, which is like in the forties by simply taking a few risks. I'm not saying you got to go jump out of an airplane, although that might be good for you to do, you know, go bungee jump or hang glide. You can repro, you're never going to become an ultra high risk taker, but you can bump yourself up. Somebody said, Ty, I've got 50K to invest. You should be in, you should get in my higher level program. Someone says Ty's hiding his steroid usage. I'm not on steroids, but I appreciate it. I don't think I look like I am, but you know, I'll take that compliment. And if that's the compliment you want to give, I will take it. Um, what else? By the way, I'll read the names of other people. Sean from Alberta, Canada. Welcome to the Junior Syndicate. I'll be sending you continue. We got a weekly digest. We'll send things that were put in the app that maybe you missed. We'll also text the digest to you. And then come on, if you can come, um, I've got the pre-event before my seminar the last Thursday. If you can come to LA, um, you don't have to attend any of the in-person stuff, but if you can, we'll probably go to like comedy, comedy club. You, it's more social, man. Remember, for people to reveal their secrets, they have to like you socially. You cannot get all the secrets out of the smartest people unless you're their friend. Elon Musk had 13 or 14 friends in the PayPal mafia, and that's when he got rich, rich. Ty, looking for a capital for a project? You should be in my junior syndicate too. You can post. I got a guy trying to sell a $10 million house in Vegas. He can't sell it. He's dropped the price to 8 mil. He's like, Ty, you know any? I'm like, bro, come in my junior syndicate. That guy's already making 100 mil a year. But he doesn't have a big social circle. I'm like his only friend. It's crazy. Crazy. He's, so he's struggling to get on the next level. Somebody said, Ty, you're not on Elon's level. That is true. That is true. Some of luck is genetic. Uh, some of wealth is genetic. Some of luck is, yeah, is luck. I always say wealth is 33% luck, 33% genes, and 33% environment, work, perspiration. So since you can't change your genes, right, focus on what you do, taking action, and that'll also improve your luck. <laughs> Harder you work, the luckier you become. Um, somebody said, Ty, you're not the most attractive man, but your knowledge makes you the most attractive. Hey, man, I've had a lot of the most beautiful women come in my inbox. Men learn stuff. And be all women are less, they are aesthetic. Okay, so you got to get your body right. But if I, I got, I've, I've been punching out of my league Looks wise for a long time. I've been punching out of my league a long time. When I had a nightclub business in North Carolina, I was punching outside of my league. So a lot of men are too fixated on the fact that they're not good looking. Get your body fat right. Get your BMI right. And then get smart. Women are attracted to intelligent men. You will punch out of your league. Men for years are like, how do you get all these pretty women? They're like, well... Women like interesting guys, you know. What was the name of the club? It, I had like four clubs. I had Parazod, George's Garage in Dur Durham, which is still there. I had Red Room, which changed names, Spice Street. There was one called Verde. A couple of them are still there. Somebody said, no, women like money, buddy. Dude, before I had money, I had women punching out of my league. It ain't just money. Gold digger women like money, but there's a subset of women that are totally, you know, somewhat neutral about money. They don't hate it, but that's not true. You don't know what you're doing. A lot of people talk about women, bro, unless you've dated the most beautiful woman in the world, you can't speak on this. Come on, man. Come on. What do you know? Not all women care about who's the wealthiest in the room. You ever see that picture of Leonardo DiCaprio next to the richest man in the world, Jeff Bezos? And Jeff Bezos' girlfriend's looking at Di DiCaprio. Now, he's a good-looking guy, but that happens all the time. Seal, you guys know the singer Seal? He has scars all in his face. He was dating the number one supermodel. He married the number one supermodel. Billy Joel, before he was rich, he could play the piano. So women are looking for men who have something. You need something. Stephen Hawking when he was paralyzed, dumped his wife for a younger, prettier nurse girl. The dude was paralyzed, but he was punching the brain. So women, you got to have something. There's too many people talking on social media. I'm like, bro, let me see the women you actually dated. That means I don't believe it. I see all these dudes talking about women and they got these things where they're picking up women off out of the park. 
I'm like, that's a setup. Let me see the girls who fell in love with you. Let me see. Come on, man. Someone said be funny to get honey. Yeah, not totally. You can be funny and not get pretty women. That one doesn't always work. There's some ugly, there's some ugly comedians that get no women. Do I believe in one life? Um, somebody said chase the bag, not women. I don't agree with that. You should anything you want in life, you need to chase. That's not true. That's like saying chase money to get muscles. Why? Just people making shit up on social media now. Just making stuff up. Just like, well, <laughs> chase money, get women. Yeah, get gold digger women. So how does that even make sense? That's not true. People, you've been you have been brainwashed. There's a new brainwash happening by the podcast generation. They get a microphone. They got no credentials. No life. Chase money and you'll always get women. No, you won't. I know so many billionaires that have no women. No women like them. So that's not true. That is not true. Become exceptional at something and you will get women. So that can be art. That can be music. That can be brain power. That can be business. That can be social status. Become exceptional at something. Exceptional people do better. Uh, but funny, if you're exceptionally funny, but Gilbert Gottfried was the ugliest comedian, and he wrote an article once. He's like, bro, I've been one of the funniest guys in Hollywood for 20 years. He's like, I sleep with no hot women. He's like, it's a, it's a lie. It's a lie. Ty, do you read religious books? Yes. I have read the Bible a few times in my life. I tried to memorize the New Testament one time when I was a teenager. I got fairly good. I got 10% of it memorized. I've read some, you know, Buddhist stuff. I've read Bhagavad Gita, Confucius. I've read some of the Quran. I've read uh, some of the ancient stuff like Zoroastrianism, like the ancient Persian religions. I've read Taoism. Uh, Japanese, Shinto. I've read, I like Native American stuff. I've read a lot of the Native American things. Uh, I've read some African stuff. A lot of stuff. Africa is not taught enough in America. America picks its own history. Um, I like Viking religions. Some of the Greek stuff. I try to read a lot of it, you know. I believe in multiple universes, parallel universes. That's why a lot of stuff I think works. I think prayer works because you basically teleport. <laughs> That's not the right word, but you basically shift into another parallel universe. A lot of smart people, by the way, that's not a weird theory. Stephen Hawking believed in that multiverse theory. That's M theory, one to the 500th power of universes. So it's basically like trillions of universes that are all slightly different version. There's a version where I'm wearing a red shirt, a green shirt right now. So I think you can jump. I think that's why prayer or manifestation works because you can jump across universes. String theory, it's like quantum physics. Things jump around, move around. They appear like Stephen Hawking said. It's been said there's no free lunch, but the whole universe is free lunch, meaning no cause and effect. That's what he meant. It's in the, the last page of which book? He has two main books, The Big Answers and The you know Brief History of Time. One of those, the last page, last couple of pages talks about that. So I believe that's science. I think a lot of religion and science is coming very close together now. Um, but I, I, it's not my expertise. <laughs> so you got to ask somebody smarter than me about that. Have I ever experienced any sort of psychedelic substance? Yeah, I've done mushrooms and stuff like that. Someone said, Ty, I died for an hour and a half a year ago. Yeah, I knew a, a guy died at one of my houses once. And he's, he's famous on YouTube now. He was directing a movie at my house. I wasn't there. And he drank too much coffee. He had a heart attack. His name's Nathan Wheeler. He's on YouTube. He blew up on YouTube with his after-death experience. Somebody texted me, yo, Nathan died at your house. I was like, what the fuck? And, uh, but he, they revived him. I don't know, an hour later, 10 minutes later, I wasn't there. Ties the Western society collapsing. All societies collapse. All empires fall. Nations are born stoic and die epicurean. So nations, just like families, they're, they, they start out hardworking. Then they make too much money, and the next generation squanders it. 
and the grandkids really mess it up and then it crashes again and then a new empire is formed. You know, Will Durant, the famous Pulitzer Prize winner, and maybe the wisest man of the last hundred years said, you know, the acquisitive society takes over, meaning nations get weaker, they get wealthier, and then new hungry cultures come in. You see that there's a culture war in every country in the world now. Okay, you see that. You see England. I, I live in London sometimes. People are arguing, oh, culture or multiculturalism. You see a war. You see wars happening in American culture between woke culture, liberal culture, right culture, you know, black lives matter, white lives matter. Like, oh, you see the war of cultures continually happening. And now it's exaggerated because of social media. Everybody has a voice, you know. And so I think. The most important thing, focus on you and your family and your tribe. Build your tribe. You're not going to be able to fight off massive cultural changes on your own. You you just, you won't win. It's too powerful uh, of an effect, if that makes sense. So what you can focus on is your own circle and build that tribe and it'll protect you no matter what's happening. Buy an army. Nah, you're not going to be able to buy an army, but you can build an army an army of friends, you know, friends and family. When shit hits the fan, strong men will rebuild. Somebody said, maybe, maybe women too. Men are good at some stuff. Women are good at some stuff. There's a whole, there's a whole war between the sexes going on in the world with men versus women. Most sides are saying kind of half truths. Women are overly criticizing men. Men are overly criticizing women. The truth about it is nature in this parallel universe has decided that uh, biological, uh, you could say polarity, where you have male and female is doing better, is better for society. And so, yeah, we'll do better with men and women working in their respective strengths. Men are better at some stuff. Women are better at other stuff. You know? just the way it is bigger than me. It's the rules of this parallel universe. For all you know, looking at things from your reality, this might be a dream. Yes, we could be a dream of a God. We could be a dream of a advanced version of ourselves. We're a video game and they could be a video game of a higher species. So we could, it could be, you ever seen a mirror where you see like 50 mirrors behind you? This universe could just be 50 mirrors, you know, and it never stops. And so that, God is the mirror that's next to you. And then there's a God to the God that keeps going back. You know, the mirrors go, it goes, it goes all the way. That's like the old, I don't know if you ever heard that. It's kind of a nerd joke, but somebody, one of the Native American tribe that believe that like turtles, the, the universe is like sits on top of turtles. I forget which tribe it was. And uh, one of the, somebody was like questioning it and they're like, well, what's that turtle sitting on? And they're like, well, that turtle sits on another turtle. And then the joke, it's not really funny. It's like a nerd joke. You know, it was like the person says, it's turtles all the way down. I Meaning it's just turtles forever. And so it could be gods of God. That's why some, some people believe in multiple gods, like Hindus. 1.4 billion people, largest population on earth is more Hindu, which believes in multiple gods. And then you have the, you know, more of the people of the book who believe in one God. But even the people who believe in one God, they believe in angels and demons, which are like demigods. You have that in Greek literature. If you're an atheist, people are obviously, when you look at, you know why we like to watch pro basketball players? We're looking at demigods. We're looking at men who are 220 centimeters, seven foot two, who are more coordinated than 99.99% of all of humanity. So that's like demigods. So everything kind of comes, the smarter you get, or maybe not the smarter, the more enlightened you try to make yourself, the more you realize it's turtles all the way down. Everything's the same, you know? But practically, forget everything I just said, money, y'all need to make money. And one rule of this universe is if you ain't making money enough that you can actually save some. So you have to have a surplus of money. A lot of you have no surplus, so you're making enough, but you you need surplus because you can't work as hard all the time, right? So you have to have it when you're sick or you need a break, you have surplus saved. And so the main problem in the world is nobody's creating surplus. And how can you create surplus? Catch new trends early. 
How do you find the new trends? Have a social circle that alerts you to the new trends continually. It's going to be other people that help you. And all of you, every single one of you, that's not making enough money. You're like one to 10 human relationships away from adding a zero to how much you make. If you make a thousand dollars a month now, if you're one z person away from making 10,000, and if you're already making 10,000 a month, you're one person away from a hundred thousand. Who here believes that if you could be friends with the top 10 wealthiest people in the world for a year, you'd be wealthier after a year? Who thinks you'd be poorer for the next year? Every single day, you spend 33% of your day with people on the top 10 of the Forbes list. Who thinks you would learn something that would allow you to skyrocket past everybody? Yeah, that was the first seven minutes of my TEDx talk. Who thinks it would be better? Two choices. One, launch your own business. Try to make more money. The second would be don't launch your own business, but spend one year around people much wealthier than you sharing their what's working for them who votes starting a business is a better idea than spending 33 percent of the next year around people who are crushing it who picks one or two does anybody pick so far everybody says one wasim says both but if you had to choose which one because you got to focus Okay, there's one per two people have chosen start a business. So it's like eight ninety nine percent of people are saying build your mentorship. So I'll mentor you, but more importantly, I'm gonna let my business partners, the smartest people I know, mentor you too. In my junior syndicate, we'll meet in person, we'll talk online. I'll send you the most cutting edge things, and um, so yeah. I'm going to pass this off here. I talked longer than I wanted to, but I haven't gone live in a while. So who's getting in right now? I'll read your name off. You go to tylopez.com slash join. tylopez.com slash join. You know one thing you learn from your network? Where to move and how to move. That's a big thing that helped me. I met this guy a long time ago who knew the whole world. His name was Drago. He's like, bro, here's where I was living in Raleigh, North Carolina. He's like, fuck this place. He's like, let me tell you where to go. Everything will get better. Money, love. And it's, hey, if I had a time machine, I would have lived into that guy a hundred times more. When you look back at your life, it's going to be a person you meet somewhere who tells you something that you either ignore or you listen to that transforms your life. He's the guy who told me about Scandinavia. People are like, Ty, how'd you end up in Sweden? I'm like, dude, this guy told me when I was like, 20 something he's like bro go to sweden he's like live part-time in america live part-time in northern europe he's like it's the best place in the world and i was like huh and i but i it took me two years to listen to him i should have listened in two minutes like a guy told me in 2014 ty do youtube ads it's gonna crush for you it took me four months to listen to him and it added i mean it was making me it added another zero a month more than that but it added a zero a day <laughs> it wasn't crazy you can make 100 g's a day net with no re rebilling and no phone sales team i wish i had that four months i didn't listen to that guy i lost four million dollars because i figured out how to make 100 g's a day let's say a little less 80 g's a day so those four months that i didn't listen to that guy was painful how did he know this he went there he, he lived in Sweden part-time. He's the only guy I'd ever met in America. He's like, bro, you don't believe me? Go to Sweden or go to Norway. He liked all of them, Iceland. He liked Scandinavia. And I lived part of my life there. So just remember, there's stuff in people's head that if it got in your head, if they mentored you, it's all a game over. So get in my junior syndicate, my closest mentorship program besides the high-level ones. I just launched it. There's a big...